Jain, uh, General Professor Gopichand Maran, uh, General Sundar Deol Sahib, Professor Harish Trivedi, Dr. Tare, uh, Ghalib. I only uh, got a taste of Urdu poetry after I joined Alikar Muslim University. And I found myself totally inadequate because I had been reading Keats and Shelley and English poets. But anyway, I did get into it, I delved into it, and then I realized some books are to be tasted, some to be swallowed, and some to be chewed and digested. So this book is to be chewed and digested. I've only had a chance to taste it because I read through half of it and then I ran short of time. So I can, cannot say that I've read the entire book, but I've tasted the whole thing. What I found the most interesting was the preface of the book. I recommend you read it. It'll give you an insight into Ghalib and insight into Urdu poetry and Persian poetry. And, uh, it is illuminating, interesting, and informative. I, that's all I would say. The preface special. Ladies and gentlemen, translation is a very, very difficult task. The ideal is for the author himself to translate a work because he knows every nuance of, the, of what he's writing. Of course, that uh, Narang Sahib translated to Deol Sahib. And I think the translation is excellent, par excellent. It, he has brought in, I mean, uh, what I was uh, given to understand is that they conversed almost every day on Skype. <laughs> the translator wanted to delve into what exactly Narayan Sahib had in his mind when he was writing the book. Uh, Ghalib's uh, <clears throat> creative process is such that even when he uses simple words or expressions, they end up packing or making what uh, Narang Sahib says is the magical treasure trove of meaning. Now that's what wonderful language, magic, magical treasure trove of meaning. Gee. <laughs> There is something very special about India's cultural climate. Uh, as you are aware, that in the, uh, during the, some period in Iran for about 200 years, uh, there was a lot of uh, turmoil and a large number of Persian poets from, from Iran had migrated to India because they found the climate uh, conducive to learning very often <coughs> and accepting all sorts of culture. Now what happened to anything that came to India? This is in Narang Sahib's own words. You see the Taj Mahal based on Iranian architecture. But there is nothing as beautiful as the Taj Mahal in Iran. Look at Indian cuisine. Pulao, Korma, Iranian words. But the delicacy which the Indian chefs brought into these dishes, I would say that in Iran these same dishes are bland. So this is the this is the beauty of anything that comes into India and is absorbed by this great country of ours. Ghalib uh, started writing when he was 8 or 11, 8 or 9 years old or 10 and wrote for about 10 years in Urdu and then decided he'd switch over to a large extent to Persian and he wanted to beat the Persian poets at their own game. And of course, then he had the 
Indian culture and everything and he had read about Buddhism. So to a large extent his poetry is influenced by Indian culture, especially Buddhism. Of course, uh, despite the fact that he was made the mentor of the Mughal emperor, uh, Ghalib did not get due acclaim in his lifetime. Uh, I will not say much more, there are a lot of other speakers. Uh, what he did write, and which I totally agree with, he says that the vintage of my verse will gain or is popular because of the famine, present famine for good literature in India. But he also says that the ones who taste it later will agree that old wine really ages. This is what he wrote. So, so the old wine has really aged. Uh, it's more than 100 years old, uh, more than that. So these people who read it then or now will savor the rich flavor and get pleasure from whatever Ghalib wrote. Professor um, Gopichan Nara has uncorked Ghalib, vintage Ghalib. Let us all savor it. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Dr. Arun Narak, BSc, DDS, is Professor Narang's eldest son. He is a top dental surgeon in Canada and is running a chain of three clinics by the name of Smile by Design in Mississauga. He was the chairman, board of directors of the American Academy of Cosmetics Dentistry, and also the chairman of Toronto Academy. He has traveled long distance from Toronto in love of his father and to be a part of all of us on this historic moment. We welcome him. I request him to come on stage and say a few words.